Good morning, everyone. Kai Noszowski, Mounted Peter Eye Clinic. Today, I would like to walk you through some cases of not so well performed peelings or peelings in um, heavy situations, and how you can deal with it, and what you should not do. So, let's get the show started. So here we are, this uh, patient starting the peeling. You see that I don't have a good view. And now what you will see what happens as I try to perform the retinotomy just above the subretinal strand. I forgot to put my cutter settings onto single cut settings. Now you've seen it. Um, it will get sharper, the image, and you've seen that I've created quite, quite a big hole um, and a slight retinal bleeding. Now I'm not worried too much about the retinal bleeding there. I'm actually a bit pissed at myself for forgetting to switch off the the single cutter. Now I'm removing a bit of the vitreo retinal strands that we have subretinally, and you will see that as I am manipulating in the subretinal space, you can see that I'm actually enlarging the hole just a tiny bit, uh, which in my eyes makes it even worse. So push comes to shove here. I've created a retinotomy that is too large and I'm enlarging this retinotomy and you can see that I'm actually not that far away from the arcades. So what you can take away from this here is whenever you do a subretinal peeling and you want to reach the subretinal band via a retinotomy is please make sure that you have um, the settings of your machine in control um, and that you're not generating this quite large retinal tear. Um, just about the patient, this is a patient that had uh, um, multiple retinal detachment, uh, he had a previous um, surgery where the redetachment was caused by apiretinal PVR um, and before I went to the subretinal PVR that formed itself afterwards, um, when the patient was referred to me, I had taken out the silicon oil already. So I've performed and relieved the traction a little bit. <clears throat> So you could say that whenever you've created a hole that is a bit too big and you are not really happy with your location, um, there isn't really that much that you can do about it. Um, you can just try to proceed um, and remove as much PVR as possible. Now, I'm a big fan of removing as much PVR as possible, the subretinal bands, um, but the most important is to relieve the traction that is detaching the retina. So now I'm going more to an overview and you see that nasally there is another PVR band and this nasally located PVR band should be obviously peeled as well. Now <clears throat> I'm a bit smarter now and I have to, um, I've switched my settings to a single cut and now you can see how much better it actually works if you put your settings to a single cut. I'm right above the PVR band. I'm quite in the middle, so I want to remove, if I cut the PVR band with my single cut that comes now, look at that, very controlled, tiny retinotomy. This is exactly how we want it. Now when I'm switching back um, with, the, uh, with the magnification, what you can see is that we will um, actually, we'll be seen right onto the subretinal band and now it's very easy to remove it. I always do it quite in the middle and um, I use a spaghetti technique. So you hold the uh, forceps just like a spaghetti needle and that gives you the opportunity uh, like a spaghetti fork and then you just twist it like a spaghetti noodle. And now as you see me doing this, watch what comes out. Ooh, that is quite the big membrane that was hiding there apparently. That is the best feeling that you can have uh, when you're doing PVR surgery and subretina bands when they come off. Feels great. Hope you liked that video. Thanks a lot. Uh, Kai Noszowski out. Have a great day. All right, that was it. You see, um, if you do a subretina peeling, just try not to cut away all the entire retina. Hope this doesn't happen to you, but it will happen to you eventually. Uh, hope you're feeling my pain and you can, you can really tell what, what it feels like. Ha, 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 ha.